uh, Joe, John, and Andy, and they're going to have some quick words for us. So welcome Engine Yard up here. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Joe Arnold, the director of engineering at Engine Yard. So about 10 years ago, I was part of a three-person development shop up in Chico, California. And one of our sites just got really popular all of a sudden. And logging in the system and watching the server go up in smoke, everything was bogging down. And just then I got a call from network operations. And they said, dude, like your server's making some weird noise. Beep. It's like, oh, crap. The server is going up in smoke. The beep meant that the raid card was on fire. So I was in Chico. Data center was in uh, Santa Clara. Drove 90 miles an hour, getting a speeding ticket along the way. Hit fries right before it closed. Grabbed gear, went to the data center, spent all night rebuilding the systems, passing out on the cold data center floor. I'm so glad that the cloud is here today. I, today we can, you know, we can do provisioning just by making a few API calls. It's great. But the problem is we have to do provisioning by making API calls. And what that means is that we have to have automation for everything. And just like we have the notion of a one-button build for our continuous integration environments, we've got to extend that. We've got to go a little bit further and really create the notion of a uh, one-button build. And we need a one-button build because in the cloud, computing resources are, are temporal. When we boot up systems, they need to come online and be exact replicas of our application servers so that we can toss them up into the cluster. Um, but the reality of a one-button de uh, deploy is kind of elusive. It, it really takes a lot of work, but it's really worth pursuing. Um, because when you're a team and there's an emergency circumstance, you can do these deployments and redeploy, recover from disaster, um, move servers around, scale up easily. And if you're a, a development team and you're just like cranking out features, release after release, um, you can deploy with confidence. And so it really makes it worthwhile. For the past three years, Engine Yard has been focusing on Rails deployments. And we've taken this battle-hardened stack, and we've built a platform on top of Amazon Web Services. And last January, uh, we launched Engine Yard Solo as an, an easy way to do Rails deployments. And today, we're making two announcements. First, one-button deploy on the Engine Yard cloud. Second, we're introducing a product called Engine Yard Flex. And Engine Yard Flex uh, gives you the ability to boot and scale Rails clusters on demand. And to demo, we got Andy Delcom and John Crosby out to demonstrate engineers and Engine Yard. Thanks, Joe. So what we have here is the Engine Yard Cloud dashboard. What we have is a load balanced cluster of three application servers and one separate database server. So when you get a surge of traffic, you need to be able to add capacity to your cluster quickly and easily. Right now, that requires going down to your data center, putting an actual physical box in your cluster. Now we can do it with just one click. So what this is doing is it's going to boot this application server and add it into the load balancing group automatically and with a one button deploy. It's also just as easy to remove capacity to reduce costs. So. <clears throat> What Andy is showing here is actually a self-healing cluster. And when we say self-healing, this is what we mean. First of all, each server in your cluster is not a single mongrel or thin. It's a dedicated server just for your app. And when I say self-healing, I'm talking about one of the flex features that I'm most personally excited about. Each node in your cluster in the Engine Yard cloud is um, operating inside of a load balancing pool. And every node inside of this pool is monitoring the health and status of all the rest of the, the nodes in that pool. So in a physical deployment environment, if you had a failure, like for example, a hard drive that went out, what would happen? Well, that box is going to be down for a few hours in the best case scenario. And someone's going to have to notify your data center, 
Maybe they'll detect it for you, not really sure. But someone's actually going to have to whittle down that this is a hard drive failure, put the new drive in the box, bring the server back up, run whatever sort of configuration tools that they're using, and eventually add your new server back into your load balance cluster. If you're running in the engine yard self-healing cluster and say a hard drive would happen to fail, all the servers in that load balance cluster instantly recognize that there's a problem with the single server and they immediately boot up a replacement for it. So, what we've shown today, a load balance cluster of application servers, a separate dedicated database tier, the ability to add and remove capacity on demand when you need it, and this whole cluster is self-healing. So now that we have this awesome platform, let's do a deployment. We can deploy either directly from the web interface or integrate into your existing day-to-day -day workflow using your existing Git repository. This deployment is standards compliant and integrates perfectly with Capistrano, so check out how easy this is. All we have to do is uh, set up the git post receive hooks and then add this small tag to the git commit message and push to GitHub. Okay, let's wait for just a second before we deploy here. And we're not actually going to push to production um, using a git push. We can and we will, but not just yet. We're talking about a real application with real users and real data, so we want to be sure to get this right. And we've all seen deploys, I'm sure, that have gone not right. Examples might be someone has a gym with some native dependencies that they happen to throw on the staging server, but no one else on the team knew about it. And if you try to deploy that new version of your app to production, that will definitely fail. And it's fairly likely that you've accumulated a set of migrations during your development cycle. And these migrations may or may not have been run in the same order that they'll be run during deployment. And you, you don't really know if someone's done some other ad hoc work on your uh, staging server related to the database. So there are also other things that can go wrong that we can't predict. This is just a fact of life with development. And what if something did go wrong with a, with a deploy? Do we even know if we can roll back? So the Engine Yard Cloud allows us to do basically fill in the missing piece of this picture. And what we're talking about is actually practicing the act of deployment. So with the cloud, we can actually do the right thing here. So let's do it. So here we are back on the Engine Yard Cloud dashboard. And what Andy is demonstrating here is creating a clone of the production environment. Now this is a real staging environment. This is a bit for bit, server for server clone of your real production environment, including its data. So now we can practice our deployments. And in our opinion, if you're deploying to a cluster, you should practice deploying to a cluster. So this will allow us to do just that. If we see a problem, we can actually diagnose that problem and troubleshoot it in an environment that resembles the real production environment and blow away this temporary staging environment as many times as we need to to get the deployment perfect. Once we're confident with it, then we can push this to production, have high fives all around on our team if you're like us in the office, and we can blow away this temporary staging environment that we've created. And we've only incurred the cost that was required to do this staging exercise as long as we needed it. So historically, there's been a really high cost associated with maintaining a true staging environment. As our production applications evolve and we build out new architectures, more nodes in our clusters, infrastructure, et cetera, it takes a lot of time to continuously move those improvements back to our staging setup. And it costs a lot of money to keep those servers sitting around essentially idle for most of the time. And so what we are actually demonstrating here is the ability, using the Engine Yard Cloud, to do the right thing, and we're making it both easy and affordable. Thanks, John. Thanks, Andy. Um, come a long way from speeding out to data centers. With Engine Yard Flex, you have the ability to create clusters with application servers, dynamic scaling, self-healing cluster, load balancing, database tier, all in age with Engine Yard Flex, which will be available at the end of June. All the deployment, the one-button deployment stuff that Andy and John demonstrated, 
is available today in Engine Yard Solo. Engine Yard believes in Ruby, we believe in the community, and we want to build products that make it so that you can focus on building the applications and uh, services for your users or your customers. And we're ecstatic to be able to bring the Engine Yard stack and make it accessible to everyone in the community. So thank you very much.